Hey, welcome back to Game Programming with Unity. I'm your instructor, Nicholas Bernhard Zeman, and this section is really cool. We're going to get to do some really awesome stuff. It's a really fun part of learning Unity, and that's working with physics. So here we are, we've got a whole scene here, and we're going to be able to create some dynamic relationships between physical forces and collisions with objects. Now, physics is pretty deep. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the creation, development, and the tweaking of physics parameters. So we're going to kind of go over stuff, you know, in a very basic manner. So we can just kind of get an idea of what is physics, how does it work, you know, how are we going to get it to work inside of our scene. So I'm showing you here a Unity scene, right? And I've got just a ground plane and some balls. Now, when we do physics, physics is in Unity is based on PhysX, which is based on your video card. Uh, NVIDIA has a API for physics that gets hardware accelerated, which is really cool because it doesn't require a whole lot of uh, central processor time. So we can do the stuff in real time, uh, but it has its limits. You know, we can't do anything incredibly difficult like cloth sims and things like that uh, in real time just because of the power that it takes to calculate that is pretty hefty. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit my play button. I've set a preset kind of physics thing up here and I'm gonna go through it piece by piece just to show you what the components of physics are and how they all work together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click play here and we'll check out. This is our physics simulation. So I'm not doing anything, there's no input controls. I've created a few objects, I've given them some physical properties and I just let the simulation run, I let the gameplay go. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's kind of dissect this piece by piece, understand how physics works in the Unity environment. All right, so I'm going to create a new object here. Let's just create a game object. And it's kind of fun to create spherical objects because we'll do a cylinder here. Because they can, and we're going to turn it a little bit, and I'll show you why in a minute. When you have objects that are unevenly um, proportioned, what happens when you have physics is they get to like spin around and flip around and stuff, so it's kind of cool to see that kind of happen. All right, let's make that yellow here by dragging the material onto it. Okay, so when I create a new object in Unity, it already has some physics properties. Let's look and see. There's a couple things that are key to having physics works. One is this thing called a collider. Now, a collider is essentially a volume upon which collisions can be detected. So there's a volume of space around this, and let's change our radius a little bit here. I'm gonna make this bigger so we can see our collider. And you'll notice that the collider only shows up in the scene view, not in the game view. Why? We don't wanna see it in the game, right? We don't wanna see all that stuff happen. So this collider creates this volume of space, and there's only a few different types of colliders. And once we get into doing custom type of physics, we'll, we'll be able to see all those different types of colliders. But for now, we're just gonna look at the one that's automatically created. Now, if you import an object uh, in, a, in an asset, in a 3D object, the collider won't be created for it. You'll have to create one as a component. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so here we are, we've got our object, we have a collider, but if I run the simulation, nothing happens to this object. The other spheres are all bouncing around. But my cylinder here that I've created does not fall, right? It's not affected by the world. Uh, it's just sitting there with a collision. Now, one thing that's interesting is this is going to be affecting other objects. And I'm just going to set it down here below some other ob objects, and you're going to see what happens. And let's just try that one more time. I'm going to stick it really close to the other objects. There you go. Now you see them bouncing off of it. Okay, so it does interact with the physical world, right? Because I've given it a collider. And we're going to talk about passive physics and active physics in more detail. Uh, but the first thing we just want to see is that I've given this object the first primary part of physics, which is a volume with which to collide with other objects. Now, I'm going to go to Component and give it a rigid body. And that rigid body makes it an active piece of physics. Now it can be affected by forces in the world and other rigid bodies can interact with it. 
and I'm just going to click on, and over here under my rigid body, I have things like mask, drag, uh, constraints, and these constrain it in one axis if you don't want physics to affect it in a single axis. Uh, and this use gravity. Now gravity is a global force, and that force affects everything with a rigid body. So I hit play, and boom, there we go. Now we have an interactive dynamic scene. You see it rolling. So all those physics properties are just kind of automatically put onto my object and interpolated. And I don't really have to do a whole lot but set up the simulation. All right, so this is kind of a brief introduction into physics, how it works, and what are the components of that physics. We're going to get into specific properties a little bit later, but I wanted to introduce you into the concept of physics and how to create an object and give it some physics properties. All right, so when we come back, we're going to get into some passive physics and how to create collisions between objects uh, very simply.